Hey there, welcome to Beam Tip and Tricks by ENG. My name is Ignacio and today I want to show you the right way to use Keynotes. Plus, I'll give you some tips on how to organize the database. You can always use a symbol and a static legend to create Keynotes on a sheet, but that misses the point of Revit and you are missing a lot of Revit features by doing that. For example, if you no longer need a Keynote on a certain sheet, you will have to delete the symbol and remember every single piece of information on the legend. That sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? With what I will show you today, you will only need to modify the database, and it's all done. So, how do we use Keynote properly? The first step is to create a text document. There, we will have our Keynote database. Now, how do we fill it? The best way I found is to use headers and groups, so that the information doesn't get all mixed up. I'm going to create a header for two specific drawings, E101 and E301. Under each header, we need to give the keynote order. I'll use the drawing prefix and then I'll start the numbering. Let's start with E101. We type the prefix followed by a dot, then the number and another dot. After that, we hit tab. This is our separator. Each tab means that the information field is done. After the tab, we write the keynote legend. We hit tab one more time, indicating that we are done with the legend and at last we write the header's name. This will allow us to group all the legends within this specific header. You will see the outcome in a minute. I'm going to create a few more keynotes for this example. Now we go back to Revit, to the annotations tab and under the keynote deployable options we go to settings. There we search for our database. It is very important that if you are working on a collaborative model you must save the database on the cloud. Otherwise, the files will be overwritten over and over. On file path, we choose relative and on numbering method, by sheet. Our next step is to create a new keynote legend. This is not a static legend. It's dynamic. It changes depending on which sheet we place it and what information this sheet contains. Make sure to check the filter by sheet options on the filter tab. This will allow us to have each sheet with the proper numbering. And finally, on the appearance tab, we uncheck the options blank row before data and show headers. This is for better visibility. Now, when we drag the keynote legend to all sheets, we will only see the keynote's place on that sheet and they will always start on number one keynote, no matter what number we have on the database. Finally, we can add the keynote. Make sure to always use user keynotes. We click on the element that we want to add the keynote at and we choose the legend. If you are adding multiple keynotes with the same legend, you can skip the choosing the legend while placing them, and then select more than one and give to all the same legend. Now, let's add a single keynote and take a look at the grouping. Here we can see the result of what we have done on our database. Now let's see some examples. Notice how every legend is sorted by groups. This is thanks to the last piece of information on our database. Let's add a new keynote with a random number, but under the same group and reload the database. See how we have it grouped no matter what number we give? Finally, let's see what happens when we add two keynotes with the same number. An error pops up and we can't reload the database. We must go back and fix it. Always make sure to type just one tab to make the coding work properly. If you like to have the database visually organized, you can add spaces, but only before the tabs, not after it. Or else it won't work. See what happens if we add more than one tab. We lose the group in property. To end this video, let's see how this new tip works for the rest of the sheets. Well, that's all I got for today. I hope you find it useful. If you like the video, give a thumb up and subscribe for more Beam Tip and Tricks videos.